Excuse me, little dog. Alright guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on a, is a Memorial Day weekend. It is Sunday, May 29th, 2022, here by the banks of Buttercup Creek at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this absolutely gorgeous day. So anyway, guys, it is, since it is Sunday, I need to do a doomsday sermon. Uh, and I know that my collapsitarian colleague, Kevin Sandbloom, covered this yesterday. And I actually covered this story a few weeks ago, but uh, our old collapsitarian Nafiz Ahmed has uh, reviewed this one of the one of the many latest dire stark UN reports and Nafiz Ahmed has uh, given his own unique perspective on what he read in the report. I've already given my own so uh, even though you might have heard some of this before on this channel and on others, I think it bears repeating because Nafis generally has some idea of what the hell he's talking about when he's talking about the collapse of civilization. And uh, so I guess this came out two days ago and a couple of you have already sent this to me and I don't know who else in the Doomosphere has covered it from uh, this outfit calling itself Byline Times, whoever that is, <clears throat> UN warns of total societal collapse due to breaching of planetary boundaries. And the byline on this one, Nafiz Ahmed. A landmark report by the United Nations concludes that global collapse is becoming more likely. But was it watered down before being published? Well, if it was published by the UN, obviously it was watered down. I think we all know the answer to that question. Uh, and I'm already confused in the first sentence. <clears throat> When the United Nations published its 2022 Global Assessment Report on Disaster Risk Reduction this month in May, uh, as I say, I already covered this. I don't know where Nafiz is coming off with this statement. The world's attention was on its grim verdict that the world was experiencing, meaning is experiencing, an accelerating trend of natural disasters and economic crises. My uh, guess is that one-tenth of one percent of the world's attention was on its grim verdict. Uh, a hell of a lot more people's attention was riveted on the price of gas. Uh, anyway, I'm not sure what that sentence means, and I'm not sure what the next one means, but not a single media outlet picked up the biggest issue, the increasing probability of civilizational collapse, and I need to make two points. Number one, uh, obviously Nafiz Ahmed, because I know he listens to every word I say, Maybe he doesn't consider Collapse Chronicles a media outlet. Am I a media outlet? Anyway, so there was one media outlet covering this, but I guess maybe Nafis missed it that day. Uh, but, you know, more importantly, before we go on, I'm actually not going to give uh, the UN too bad of a spanking on this because it seems to me so what the report was about was basically 
the collapse, the, you know, the ecological, physical collapse of planet Earth because of surpassing all of these planetary boundaries. Have we, how many have we passed? I've already forgotten. I think we are up to five out of the nine. So it seems to me that inherent in that statement, if the planet, you know, the, the actual, if life on Earth is collapsing, it seems obvious to me that global industrial civilization is going to collapse along the way. Uh, my guess, well, that civilization will collapse before the planet. So it's kind of built in. But anyway, uh, I guess they did not directly point this out that if the planet collapses, you can probably count on civilization going down with the planet. Anyway, back to Nafiz's reading of this. Buried, buried in the report, which was endorsed by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, is the finding that escalating synergies between disasters, economic vulnerabilities, and ecosystem failures are escalating the risk of a, quote, global collapse scenario. This stark conclusion, I'm a little bit embarrassed for Nafis actually using the word stark or dire. It's time to pull out the thesaurus. I'm gonna have to pull out the thesaurus and help out uh, all of these people. There's uh, there's other words than stark or dire, and I will let you figure out what some of them are. Anyway, <clears throat> this stark conclusion appears to be the first time that the UN has issued a flagship global report finding that existing global policies are accelerating toward the collapse of human civilization, yet somehow this urgent warning has remained unreported until now. The report does not suggest that this outcome is inevitable or specify how close to this possibility we are, but it does confirm that without radical change, that is where the world is heading. And as anybody with a brain from Nafiz Ahmed to Antonio Guterres to Sancho Panza knows there will be no radical change. So uh, this report does confirm that global collapse is exactly where the world is heading. It is no longer a matter of if, it is a matter of when. Okay, now we get to talk about the infamous UN's Sustainable Development Goals. The UN's Sustainable Development Goals and the Sendai Framework, yes, the Sendai Framework are a set of social, economic, legal, political, and institutional measures to reduce disaster risk and losses both involve targets to 2030, which the world is in danger of failing to meet. There is no chance that uh, if we meet one out of the 20, uh, I will be shocked. Uh, anyway, we've been over that one. That failure, you know, that obvious failure baked into the cake however, is directly linked to the rate at which human activities are interfering with natural systems, in particular planetary boundaries. The planetary boundaries framework was developed by the Stockholm Resilience Center in 2009 to provide what it calls a, quote, science-based analysis of the risk that human perturbations 
will destabilize the Earth system at the planetary scale. <coughs> this framework identifies a range of nine key, e nine key ecosystems. Uh, I'm not sure he's using the word ecosystem correctly in this sentence. This framework identifies a range of nine key ecosystems. That's not the right word. It, it, it identifies a range of nine key boundaries, which, if pushed past a certain threshold, will dramatically reduce the, quote, safe operating space for human habitation, human habitation and everything else habitation. The report notes that at least four, okay, four of the nine planetary boundaries now seem to be operating outside the safe operating space. While I think, was the fifth one announced like the day after this study? Anyway, while land system change and climate change are in a zone of, quote, uncertainty with increasing risk of overstepping the safe operating space. The report says biochemical flows and novel entities defined as new engineered chemicals, materials, or organisms and natural elements mobilized by human activity such as heavy metals have far exceeded that space. However, <coughs> the situation is likely to be worse than acknowledged in the UN's report. Do you think so, Nafis? I imagine that, that the situation is likely to be worse than uh, previously expected. All right. Byline Times revealed last summer that according to Professor Will Steffen of the Stockholm Resilience Center, two more planetary boundaries, ocean acidification and fresh water use, would probably then also be, quote, transgressed, meaning that we, yes, that's right, meaning that we are breaching six out of nine planetary boundaries. If we continue to cross boundaries at this rate, it is possible that we will cross almost all of them before 2030. Do you think so? According to the UN's report, quote, the human material and ecological footprint is accelerating the rate of change a potential impact when systemic risks become cascading disasters is that systems are at risk of collapse, close quote. Yet, although the risk of systemic collapse is discussed at different points in the report, the quote, global collapse scenario did not receive extensive elaboration. Instead, the report makes reference to a separate contributing paper published by the UN's Office for Disaster Reduction. That paper, titled Pandemics, Climate Extremes, Tipping Points, and the Global Catastrophic Risk, How These Impact Global Targets, offers an in-depth scenario analysis of global collapse risks based on how human activities are transgressing planetary boundaries. That paper is authored by Thomas Cernev, a researcher at the University of Cambridge's Center for the Study of Existential Risk. It finds that the continuation of business as usual and a failure to invoke drastic policy changes mean that human civilization is moving inexorably toward collapse. Quoting uh, that paper, quote, 
from the scenario analysis, it is evident that in the absence of ambitious policy and near global adoption and the successful implementation, the world continually tends towards the global collapse scenario. Yeah, so <clears throat> I guess this paper looked at four pathways, three of the four leading to collapse. Thomas Cernev's paper identifies four potential pathways ahead, yet only one of them, stable Earth, involves the achievement of global targets under the UN Sustainable Development Goals and Sendai Framework. All the others are heading toward collapse. And, you know, that this BS uh, UN Sustainability Goals, and I'm trying to get my buddy <clears throat> Jeremy Jimenez to come on the show and, and uh, give me his take on these UN Sustainability Goals. There's two things about them, of course, uh, that, number one, I, I'm pretty sure we're failing to meet any of them. That's one thing I will need to check with Dr. Jimenez to see how many we're failing. And more importantly, they're a joke. Uh, the words sustainable development are an oxymoron. So even if we were achieving the oxymoronic UN sustainability development goals, we would still be heading towards global collapse. It makes no difference whether we achieve them or not because both lead to the path of civilization and ecological collapse of the planet. I assure you that lowering the planet's population to, uh, what does the Georgia Guidestone say, 500 million is nowhere, nowhere in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. But anyway, we're going to get back to Nafiz and his review, now his review of uh, the second paper by Thomas Cernev. Uh, that report states, quote, in all of these scenarios except for stable earth, the achievement of global targets and accompanying frameworks is negatively impacted. Do you think so? Furthermore, in the absence of change, scenarios, quote, earth under uncertainty and earth under threat tend towards that of global collapse. The paper explains that by adopting a systems analysis, it is possible to see how the crossing of one planetary boundary systematically results in the crossing of others. And we're up to six. There you go. Close quote. Uh, they are crucial to providing a safe operating space for human societies to develop within a stable earth system, quote, with the passing of these boundaries subsequently and most likely resulting in societal destabilization and potential global catastrophic risk events, close quote. Global catastrophic risk events are defined as those leading to more than 10 million fatalities or greater than $10 trillion in damages. The paper's worst case global collapse scenario is described as the result of multiple planetary boundaries uh, 
being breached, increasing the likelihood of global catastrophic risk events that set in motion a sequence of economic and political breakdowns which further drive ecological collapse processes. In this scenario, quote, total societal collapse is a possibility, the paper warns. Okay, with a long quote from this paper, this scenario presents a world where planetary boundaries have been extensively crossed, where we are already at that point as far as I can tell, and if global catastrophic risk events have not already occurred or, or are in the process of occurring like they are, then their likelihood of doing so in the future is extreme. In this scenario, global targets have most likely not been achieved as so far for instance, not one of the biodiversity goals. 20 out of 20 failed miserably, just for one example. In this scenario, global targets have most likely not been achieved and the resulting collapse of society in this scenario means that the future achievement of any global targets is unlikely and total societal collapse is a possibility. Disaster risk reduction has not been successful and disasters are common with disaster events as well as global catastrophic events such as pandemics increasing, close quote. The paper goes on to suggest that in such a scenario, without policy changes designed to mitigate risks and make the global system more resilient and adaptable, quote, the crossing of planetary boundaries is likely to exacerbate global catastrophic risk with large and complex environmental feedback loops leading to further environmental and social collapse and that depending on the extent of the crossing of the plant planetary boundaries and the severity of any global catastrophic events that may have occurred, policy interventions that are not drastic are unlikely to improve society and a reactive policy approach will need to be taken, close quote. Can you say chemtrails? Can you say solar radiation management, geoengineering? Can you say sucking carbon out of the sky? Can you say dumping giant antacids uh, in the ocean? Can you say flying to Mars? Anyway, that scenario, you know, uh, the obvious, uh, the obvious scenario, you know, that scenario, leads to extremely limited international cooperation, <coughs> in turn creating an even higher risk of global or environmental conflict as the environment degrades, quote, with potential forced migrations of people from uninhabitable areas that in turn has the potential to heighten global catastrophic risks by making events such as pandemic or nuclear war more likely, close quote. While the global collapse scenario represents the worst case scenario, it is difficult to avoid the conclusion that we can see signs of it emerging today. 
of greater concern is that the two other scenarios explored by the paper still tend towards this worst case scenario. And uh, anyway, guys, what do you think? Keep going. Uh, anyway, for the four or five people who are still with me, I'm just going to keep talking to myself because it is a gorgeous day. And when I finish talking to myself, I have to get to work. And I would rather be sitting here in this chair talking to myself than working and getting attacked by biting flies. All right, plowing on. <clears throat> in the Earth under threat scenario, quote, planetary boundaries have been crossed past a safe limit, which they have already, or there is a large degree of uncertainty as to humanity's position relative to the boundaries with strong suspicion and evidence of some, if not all, having been crossed, close quote. We appear to be either very close to reaching this point or have already reached it. And I will certainly agree with Nafis by that definition it sounds to me like we have already, we're technically un, in the Earth under threat scenario. The UN paper adds, quote, while global catastrophic risk is low and GCR events are unlikely to occur, the complex feedback loops that operate between the planetary boundaries are likely to increase the likelihood of global catastrophic events occurring in the near future, close quote. So if the definition is 10 million people dying in an event, I would say, I'm saying there is a 50-50 chance that 10 million sub-Saharan Africans will die of starvation this year. And we will be solidly in, as I've been saying since day one, uh, the collapse of global civilization and the planet it will begin in sub-Saharan Africa. The dominoes will begin to fall there. You are going to see your first global catastrophic uh, risk event uh, crash and burn in sub-Saharan Africa. As I say, I will give it a 50-50 chance that 10 million people will starve to death and I will add that probably 8 million of those people will be under the age of 10. Back to Nafis. Uh, the paper argues that political and global inst instability will be exacerbated by, quote, a quickly degrading environment which could further drive conflict and hinder future progress towards achieving global targets. In this scenario, the world is on a path towards a global collapse scenario where global catastrophic events are occurring unless considerable preventive and reactive policy interventions that are ambitious are globally adopted and successfully undertaken, close quote, which would mean a global one child, if not zero child policy for the next 30 years. You think we're going to see that happen, guys? Even in the earth under uncertain, earth under uncertain scenario where, quote, planetary boundaries have not been extensively crossed, or there is a high level 
of uncertainty as to humanity's position relative to the boundary, we would still be in a position where global catastrophic risk is high with the likelihood of a GCR event being extreme or a GCR event having already occurred or in the process of occurring, close quote. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we kind of checking off all these boxes in 22. Okay. Uh, now we have the hopium. You knew that some hopium was coming. Despite the potential to achieve some global targets in international cooperation, the paper concludes that only further ambitious policy changes can, quote, ensure that development targets are achieved and the world is not pushed towards a global collapse scenario. Yes, right. The paper states, quote, the scenario analysis undertaken illustrates a dangerous tendency for the world to tend towards the global collapse scenario, close quote. Although reactive policies, again, can you say geoengineering, are necessary to mitigate existing risks, the paper calls for a focus on preventive policies to build greater system resilience and to avoid further crossing planetary boundaries. Again, there is one preventive policy that has any hope of doing that, and that is to prevent people from being born until this population of this planet is down to at least 500 million or fewer. In particular, the paper calls for, quote, the creation of a planetary boundaries goal, yes, in the next version of the Sustainable Development Goals adopted after 2030. Yeah, can you imagine what the UN Sustainable Development Goals for the 2030s are going to look like? Uh, I can't, yeah, can't wait to do this. We can't wait to read those. Uh, yes, along with, quote, the incorporation of global catastrophic risks into the targets. Yes. And uh, then this last part of the article is looking uh, whether this uh, stark dire report was actually diluted. And if they had been honest and, and hadn't had somebody redlining the real juice it would probably be more honest. <laughs> Take it away, Nafid. As I had found in 2017 as a researcher at Anglia Ruskin University's Global Sustainability, Sustainability Institute, the process of global societal collapse is likely to accelerate as a self-reinforcing feedback loop between human system destabilization and earth system disruption. And what Nafiz said back in 2017 is exactly what is playing out. In this feedback loop, earth system disruptions, in this case triggered by the breaching of planetary boundaries, destabilize social, political, and economic institutions. This, in turn, inhibits successful policy <clears throat> response to Earth systems disruption, leaving the planet vulnerable to further Earth system <coughs> disruption outbreaks. The result is a feedback effect in which human system destabilization and earth system disruption occur in an amplifying cycle with the potential to culminate 
in a dramatic loss of complexity in the human system what might be defined as a collapse. The UN's you know, their latest global assessment report and its contributing paper by Thomas Cernev offer scenarios that are consistent with this process, but it is not clear whether any of these scenarios have actually begun. Ah, it is completely 100% clear to me, Nafis. Didn't you just say didn't didn't he just say uh, a few paragraphs ago that that it appears that we are already uh, it, 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 anyway? So I don't know where he's coming up uh, with that. It is not clear whether any of these scenarios have actually begun. Only that currently the world is tending dangerously toward them. Uh, it began in about 1970, if not with the invention of fire. But there are reasons to suspect that a collapse process has already started, even if it is still possible to rein in. Yes. <clears throat> a senior advisor to the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction and contributor to the Global Assessment Report said on condition of anonymity claims that the paper was watered down before public release. The source said, you know, this is not Fees' source obviously, that the world had, quote, passed a point of no return and I do not feel that this is being properly represented in UN or media as of now. The Global Assessment Report 2022 is an eviscerated skeleton of what was included in earlier drafts, close quote, they claimed. This year's report is a landmark document. It is the first time that the United Nations has clearly understood the impending risk of total societal collapse if the human systems continue to cross the planetary boundaries critical to maintaining a, sta a safe operating space for the Earth systems. Yet, Despite this urgent warning, not only has it fallen on deaf ears, the UN itself appears to have diluted its own findings. Like the fictional film, Don't Look Up, we are more concerned with celebrity gossip and political scandals seemingly unable or unwilling to confront the most important challenge that now faces us as a species. Either way, these UN documents show that recognizing the risk of collapse is not about doom mongering, but about understanding risks so we can make better choices and avoid the worst case outcomes. As the report acknowledges, there is still much that can be done, but the time for action is not after 2030. It is now. Thank you. Uh, I guess uh, it doesn't have a comment. I would like to see uh, how many comments that article received. My guess is... Uh, so what was he saying while that is falling on deaf ears? Uh, yes, we are more concerned with celebrity gossip, but I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to maybe let somebody else cover the story. Courtney Kardashian 
who is the mother of mother, the 43-year-old mother of three, Courtney Kardashian, says her fertility doctor suggests she drink Travis Barker's semen four times per week. I guarantee you a hell of a lot more people read that article than have ever heard of Nafis Ahmed. Where's the log? And anyway, I need to wrap this up because I have got to get to work uh, here on this gorgeous day. It's going to be heading towards 90 tomorrow, so I better get out there and enjoy this beautiful day today, and I highly suggest you get out there and do the same. Bye, guys. Man, when you look at this, this is Buttercup Creek. Alright. We got a brother realize, realize, realize. Adding to our brand new better kitchen. Man, come see us at Bugs in a Jar. Bye, guys.